I like how that opening had no dialogue, no narration at all. It's just look at this situation. Look at this 0.5 seconds in our lives. The 10 minutes they spend in this expedition is going to make up 50% of some of their life stories. Hunter X Hunter episode 113, an X indebted X insect. This stairwell, its own character. Our first victim, first casualty. Try to get past this. <laughs> I got hit. Oh no. Oh no, he's hit bad. He's hit bad. He's hit really bad. Knuckle doesn't exist right now. Knuckle doesn't exist. Who is Knuckle? Oh, come on, man. Come on now. Why does this feel like a last stand? Uh, this is a decoy. Like some kind of vape smoke. Make it count. I, mean, I thought that was obvious. No battle experience. Oh my god. You're not supposed to be able to do that. No! Oh, it's smoke. Oh my god, that got me so bad. That got me so bad. I didn't know smoke could hold weapons. Damn, Moral's a G. How does he do it every time? But he's no more... His vape! Oh, he's powerless without his vape. I keep it coming. How, I mean, how many do you get before he figures it out? This is also like, with this, all this flailing, I, I feel like this is the perfect counter to people who don't or can't get touched. Our move. No, we established that in the first punch. That's not going to happen. I mean, for real. Right, right. Hitting him with all the power of credit card companies. And you can't see the thing. Wow. Adrenaline makes you do crazy things. It just look cool. Have your moment. Prove it to himself. This is exactly what you want. How much mental ink has been wasted on anxiety about an upcoming situation? Will I be able to do it? Will I freeze up? You don't know, but you can still prepare. You can train. Recently, I was thinking that maybe a really good guideline, because I, I mean, I naturally have these recurring thoughts that kind of eat at me about what I should be doing, what I'm not doing, all the impending dangers. But I think at a certain point, I have to ask myself, is this anxiety, is this thought going to lead to an action, like a useful action? Is it going to drive any kind of change in the direction of the things I'm afraid of? If not, like, whatever. What's the point? It could just be dropped. All right, it's a danger. Alternatively, you do something to prepare. Shoot has been training. He also has been thinking a lot about the fact that he wants to be able to act. It's also that I don't think you really want to make the belief in yourself something that important. If you've never done something, of course you don't know if you can do it. Maybe it's possible to will yourself into self-confidence. Personally, I don't find that to be true. I think you will yourself into doing things. And by extension, if you've done the preparation as well, if you have taken the actions, you will have these moments where you surprise yourself and it's a wonderful feeling. Like, I want you to just crush it here. And also, if he survives, this is a potential cure for this very thing. Because like, now he actually has evidence that he, he showed up and he did all this. He took flight, literally, or... Literally and figuratively. It would be so cool if you just solos Yupi. 1 HP, 1 HP, 1 HP, 1 HP. Look really cool. That's good. High respect. We need to get this back in Moral's hands. There you go. Do your part. He left it to him and he, he came through. His student. Awesome. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Gotta get you drunk so I can love you. The way I put that did not sound sweet, but you know what I mean. Alternatively, you can not get drunk and give them a very manly pat on the back and say, I love you, bro, <laughs> to sort of distance yourself from the feelings a little bit so you can express your love without, you know, crossing any lines. We are pals. We're in, it seems. I wonder if the ants are also susceptible to oxygen deprivation. There are a couple, yeah, with Nen and all the limits of Nen, and given what Moral's shown us, there's a lot of other ways, come to think of it, that aren't just a physical fight. You don't need to be stronger than them, necessarily. You probably don't want to engage them on their, their strongest terms. Like, they may be level 9,000 in Nen, but need oxygen like the rest of us. 
ユピーが大階段を破壊した時。But did, did she get trapped? Just the kids alone in the palace. 突入と同時に地下へのエレベーターを目指したイカルゴ。Where is Palm? 二匹の兵隊あり。イカルゴの向かう先。Abandoning the plan a little bit for a friend. You gotta alert Gon though. Oh, I know it's, there's no time, but wow, interesting leaving Gon for Ikago. I'm not sure what to make of that. You could read it as faith in Gon, you know, like who needs help more? You could also read it as a very interesting pull of the heart in one direction over another. But also, wouldn't, wouldn't Gon know? Wouldn't Gon feel those change in direction? I mean, he's preoccupied, but I don't know. Maybe Cloak can dispatch these two and get back fast enough. Short work, short work. Yes, it's interesting. Right, 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 yeah. Don't get stuck zigzagging, just stick with your choice. Take care of them. Eh, whatever, not impressive. That's training right there. Hands still in the pockets. Briefly, for the yo-yos. Good, that's exactly what I wanted to happen. Now you can use the yo-yos momentum to zip, zip back. <laughs> oh, but time is so critical, that half second. Oh, you. He's got other ambitions. He doesn't care if the Royal Guards die or what have you. I mean, he could easily just as easily switch sides, it feels. Whatever's advantageous. I mean, it seems like a good move so far. The Kago can now move on unimpeded. It's friendship. That's what this is. If a Kago was already all in, he is now doubly all in. <laughs> His heart has been set ablaze by friendship. So charged, this dialogue less interaction. <laughs> He will repay that, I feel. How fast did he say that? Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's been such a long time coming for Kalua. There's so much behind this. The strategic, always pick your lane, make the best choice, survive, complete your mission. Has just sort of given way to like, do the right thing. Friends above all. Maybe heart and instinct over cold rationality. Though given what we've seen about Daddy's old dick, I bet given how expansive of a person he seems, despite being this assassin or whatever, he would probably love this about Kalua. He'd probably really respect this and be happy about his growth. It might be why he pushed him into the, the whole friendship journey in the first place, you know? Like, you want him to be a cold killing assassin, but you don't just want someone who follows orders and copy and paste your protocol. You want someone who like deeply, richly wants to be where you are and do what you do with the same understanding that you have about it. That's when it becomes thrilling. Oh, you again. Can you play it off? You know what this reminds me of? And I sort of hope that no one connects with this because it's so terrible. When you're deeply in love with someone and you feel instinctively that the other person, though they have not quite formalized this verbally, is past the point of no return in terms of their affection and their heart and their intentions. And so what you're looking at is like a wall, like a, a facsimile of something that you care about and used to be real, but now it's just this false projection. And you, so desperate to return to that feeling, try to force it. Like, remember that great time we had? Wasn't that great? Remember this inside joke we, we always used to share? Ha ha ha, isn't that funny? Let's please give me some feeling of normalcy again. And you're gripping tighter and tighter, but it's water. The tighter you grip, the faster it flows out of your hands. That is sort of the vibe I get from Poofy, even if it's not romantic. It's like the king is everything that he wants and needs, or his image of the king and what the king is, but the king is not his, and the king is not Poofy's image. The king is the king. And on top of that, you weren't even there. You could have scored points. You had one job. I know that feeling. Oh, he's losing it. Oh, how did it be so sympathetic? There it is. Jealousy. 
But very interestingly, in a key sense, it's not jealousy of the girl. I mean, it is, but she's kind of just the face of it. I think in some way, it's the jealousy of a different king. You know, it's like the king that isn't the king that he wants, that Poof needs. Kamugi isn't a threat to Poof. The king is a threat to Poof. Kamugi is just the object. You know, she's the, the catalyst he can point to. If the king was showering Poofy with love and affection and praise and saying, what a great royal guard you are, head pat, etc., he would have no issue with Kamugi, most likely. Or much less of an issue, at least. It's so well done, this whole thing. All of the royal guard, all the king, it's... It's so great. It's so great. Sekai no oga. Manga ichi no. Gesen na ningen no mi o amiji. Mizukara gesen na ningen no heya ni ashi o hakobu na. These poses. He's by himself posing emotionally. I got some good news for you, Poof, I guess. Fuzuika no haishin sha Poof. <laughs> this dance, this personal emotional dance. <laughs> so dramatic. The music is such a great fit too. And it's his music. Fanaticism! And here, I thought it was just natural, healthy. Yes, this is the point, exactly in that situation I described, where you're broken, and it cuts one of two ways. If you're lucky, or strong, or wise, or if your self-preservation mechanisms kick in, you just get out. You get out of it, you run far away, and you grieve. The other direction that can cut is you just embrace the insanity. Yes, I am just a slave to this person. I would rather do all the things that my heart is screaming at me are wrong. I would rather die than take one step out of this fixation. But I wouldn't know anything about that. I've never had my heart broken. Oh god, I don't know if this... His emotional state... You. Could help him or hurt him. I think help him. Because he's just... Who the hell cares about death at this point? That was actually very bug-like, flying into a window. Is Moral gonna take him on by himself? We've never really seen Poof fight. I really want to see his ability too. And here it is, spiritual message, yeah. Some kind of tele telepathy, emotional telepathy. Uh, I don't like that they cut away from that. I'm traumatized by the show and fight cutaways. He's doing his part. I'm going as alone. Let's go not like, where's Kalua? I guess he just knows and accepts. I did not see who that was. Oh, it's- oh, it's him! Oh, they're taking it outside. Oh, Chills, imagine that- <laughs> this image! Seeing this! First comes right! <laughs> imagine! <laughs> From there. Oh, don't tell me where to- where to go, what to do. But, I mean, P Pito, I guess. Pito. Oh, God. <laughs> this music. <laughs> Gon raring to fight? Since when? I haven't finished this arc yet, but I think I can safely declare my three favorite characters from it, which probably will come as no surprise. It's the central stairwell, the narrator, and where is Palm? <laughs> Where is, what, what the hell is she doing? Honorable mention to slow down time. It's a shame that there's so much to do and that we have to kill ants because I, all right, I'm sure I'm not alone in this. How many people want a Poof spinoff? <laughs> I just wanna see the, the adventures of Poof. You don't have to do that much. I mean, I don't even need characters or like events. You could just put Poofy in a room, have him think to himself while gesticulating glamorously and it would be entertaining because his thought process is all too real and relatable. He is rumination metamorphosized. Poofy would make some great art. He would make some great art and he would have so so much to say about stuff, and then his life's just a mess. It's easy to go overboard, I guess, or it can get to the point where it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, abstracting things to some super outer layer level. But I think there can be some utility in looking at Poof and looking at what is it really. It's not really the king, right? Just like how Kamugi is not the source of his pain and not the real problem. The king is not the source of his beauty and joy and fixation. The king is a physical form that he's attached that to, that he identifies as the thing, but it's not the thing. The king is just what the king is. Yuppie's ideals and thoughts and feelings of beauty and desire for godliness, love of devotion, deep sentimental connection to things is all him, as cliche as that sounds. But I think maybe the arc to be had in that situation is to put that burden on yourself. That's the thing you so highly treasure, but you don't see it as possible from you. You've given up on you being able to harness that, so you pin it to something else. Your hopes ride on them. A few episodes ago when I first mentioned this felt romantic to me, I think that a lot of the times is the, the messy part of relationships where your life is kind of stuck in a sense, or you don't know how to get what you want or to be who you want to be. You just are what you are and you sort of settled in a, in a layer of self-identity that is not great, but also not painful, sort of comfortably numb. And then somebody comes along that's just so beautiful in whatever variety of ways that you're like,
like, that's so amazing that you're awestruck. There's this impulse to sort of attach yourself to it because you think that if someone like that, someone you've identified as having these great traits will love you, there's a transfer. There's a value transfer or a trait transfer. But in reality, there isn't. There can't be. And you probably wouldn't want there to be. It's a weird shortcut. And it weakens you and it strains your relationship because now you're not really being with a person. You're being with an object to a certain extent. It's something in your inventory that gives you a stat boost and nobody wants to be that, you know? Like you don't want to be someone else's stat boost. I'm way overthinking this. But if Poof could get out of his own way and like be the uh, a king, so to speak, in the way he envisions the king and like he could look in the mirror and see that, it would snap that, that attachment to a large extent. I mean, it's hard to talk about this to a certain extent because they're royal guards and their role is dedication to the king. But if you really think about it, what does that mean? I mean, they're also human. You could take it as just an identity of the plot, like royal guard loves the king. But to try to look at it from a human perspective, that kind of thing, I mean, yeah, that exists in real life too. Like for example, uh, the relationship you hope between mother and child, that is this biological pre-made instinctive attachment and connection. But that's also not the whole thing. That doesn't always lead. It doesn't always have to lead, especially with time as relationships mature. So, you know, Pito, Poof, Yupi, they can certainly start that way as children born into the world, though technically they're older than the king or parents, I guess, but they can also have more. The way I think about it, they could have like lives. They could live outside of the king. They could come around. They could break their attachment. It would just take a lot of work and like undoing a lot of the programming and a lot of their assumptions they had that they developed as kids. Actually saying that out loud, <laughs> they do sort of seem like the king's children, even though they're older. They play very particular roles that I think are kind of archetypes. Like Poofy is the very needy and attached one. Like, please love me, mommy. Peter was the one who just wants to go off into the world and do her own thing. She could still be a loving daughter, but she's secure in the relationship. So her, her eyes are outward. And then Yuppie is the one that's just sort of around. And he gets to stay because he's your offspring. <laughs> and you don't have really high expectations for him. He's just there and he's tolerated.